like to welcome you to our DreamSec event. Tonight we are at the amazing Westbo Studios. The venue has been provided by the Workspace Group. And the Westbo Studios are home to many artists and creative professionals. Hence the title of today's presentation and today's event, Creative Technologies. On the panel tonight, we have four amazing entrepreneurs. And let me introduce you, Steve Burdham. He's the CEO and founder investor of We7. Then we have Dr. Babsi, Barbara Lippe, who's the founder of Area Now. Then we have Gregory Poletta, who's the engineer and designer. He founded Gas Design. Simon Hopkins, who's the director of Unthinkable Consulting. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Workspace Group, Rackspace and Square. Enjoy the debate, I'm sure it will be stimulating. Meet other interesting collaborators. It's not about the panel discussion really at the end of the day. The panel discussion is to stimulate debate, but really the, the, the purpose of this is to get together, spark some interesting conversations, and really try and start some projects, some, uh, uh, some businesses, and anything we can do to promote that will help. The way that we'll do this is I'm going to kick off the, the conversation, hopefully, and at some point we'll take some questions from you guys as well. Where does that, that uh, energy, that idea come from, and how do you build cross-disciplinary teams to make your business function? On that theme, I'd like to actually just cover two things. One is ideas are fabulous, they're brilliant, they create energy and all the other things, but from a business perspective, you have to be very careful. I know people who create ideas every minute of the day, but when you move into business, it's about execution. I think the magic is your team, and if everyone of your team is the best in what he or she is doing, then you can have a team of creatives, but please also have a person who is very, very good in business and accountants and all these kind of things. You know, how do I know whether my business is going to take off? The number one problem that I see is that people don't understand competitive intelligence. We're in an environment where disciplines are changing constantly. The environment, the technology environment is changing so fast that to have a grasp on the different disciplines that we need in a team is really, really difficult. And it takes a kind of fleet of, fleet of footness with thinking that's got to be pretty sharp. One of the challenges is, is how do you know when that you're at those decision points. So let's go back again and see if we can find out where those decision points have really arose as these guys started to build their businesses. And then we'll pick up some questions from you folks. I just want to pull out some words that, that came out um, uh, from that. that I learned very early on makes a massive difference between moving forward. First one is passion. If you don't have passion for what you're doing, nobody else will have passion for it and a business startup without passion is a waste of space. Uh, and you might think you have passion, but when you see some people and some of the successful people, they really know how to actually ooze passion to a point that everybody, I don't know what it means, but I want some of it uh, in that side of it. The second one is ask yourself one big question, why? Why are you doing it? Why are you going to put yourself through building a business? What are you going to try to achieve? And the third word I would like to pick out of it is the most important one of all. Understanding your customer by understanding what you're doing, that will drive the opportunity far more than anything else. Never ever forget at the end of the day, the person that matters, if you're really creating a business, is your customer. It's so true what you said that I don't know what I should say now, but I can say from my experience we failed exactly on understanding the customer at the first business we did. And we stumbled from one phase into the next. But we never, never could really sell it to the customer because we didn't know how to explain it to them. We could just say, it's the best thing, just try it, but I don't know why it's good. So we were lacking this um, the skill of, of this universally understandable passion. The startup we have now, Area Now, is built or, or was uh, born out of a need we self had. But we see ourselves as the customers as well, and we are very, very inside 
uh, this, this target market. How many of you think design is important within the context of your business or what you do? All right, that's a pretty good number. Not a lot of people get that, and so I'll make it pretty simple. Especially in Europe, and I'm going to focus on Europe for a minute, there's a very solid connection between art, engineering, business. It's very well integrated. About 10 years ago, if you looked at Linksys products, they were really not so attractive. Since it's being recorded, God knows if the CEO will give me a call and say, you're, you're a horrible person because you said my company is bad, but 10 years ago, they were pretty bad. Somehow, Linksys got their head around the fact that having a small little router box that's a little bit more attractive is better. Can they prove that their sales went up because of it? Not necessarily. The marketing team there, I bet they'll tell you they can prove it, but no one can really put their finger on it. Does their company look better than their competitors? Guaranteed. I do again find myself agreeing with everything that's gone before, but wanting to throw in a small caveat, which is, um, about this concentration on the end user, about the concentration on the customer. The stage in the development of all companies where the customer must become king or queen. But at the beginning, at the idea stage, sometimes, again, you just don't know what people are after because they don't know what they want. Your users, your potential customers, don't know themselves. Um, in terms of marrying creative and enterprise, so I work with student entrepreneurs um, and a lot of them go into tech enterprises, a lot of them go into social enterprises. Um, creative enterprises, the sector is very underrepresented. So I just wanted to get your opinion on how this can be overcome. And I know, the, um, Barbara, you said creative people shouldn't think about business, they should think about creativity. Um, I would personally disagree with that, but I just wanted to hear um, three other panelists' opinion on that. It would be great for creative people if they have the power to delegate all the things they're not interested in because then they're not good at it either. But in a company I think it's very important that there is some kind of force and it's either in yourself as a creative person or you really make sure you get to know this business person or this accountant. You've got to decide where you want your strength to be and then you surround yourselves with other people who have other strengths to make it happen. And that's what you see which came to the very first question happened through the life of the business. Um, you start where you do everything, but as soon as you can, and as soon as it's financially viable, bring people in who do the other bits better than you do. As business people, designers, engineers, I'll put you in three buckets, right? Business people, designers, or engineers. It's your job to be able to speak three different languages to be a successful leader of either of the small independent um, design firm that you have, or as the leader of a company. You have got to be able, I'm sure you do, you've got to be able to speak marketing to the marketing people, legal to the legal people, design to the designers, engineers to the engineering people. You may not be the best engineer in the world, but I behoove you to go and get an engineering book and practice learning the vocabulary to speak with them. Because the typical designer may walk in and say, I want it to be like this. And they show a sketch that like, you know, is amazing looking that will never be made because the mechanical capabilities of what they want are impossible. You might have just satisfied me anyway on this one, <clears throat> but I thought I heard you say before that um, uh, design was not so important in software. And what I, I was just gonna ask you, because you know, architecture and design, although it may not be visual, um, are quite important, no? It's time to redeem myself. As an engineer in the past, it's extremely important, but design takes on a totally different meaning within the context of a system architecture or software design or et cetera. And the best example would be, I have a, a PC, but I made it look like a Macintosh just to mess with my Apple friends. So yeah, design is very important from an architecture standpoint, and I was constantly under scrutiny of being a bad coder when I was a coder for making architecture mistakes, but it, it's a different, it's a different language. What I meant was design within the context of physical objects, so if that's any better. Okay guys, I think we've come to the end here. Um, thanks very much indeed for your, your interactivity, and uh, thank you very much indeed to the panel for their, their, uh, their insights this evening. Thank you, and enjoy the networking.
great to see the diversity of the people um, that I came to see tonight. Made me think about things in a very, very different way in terms of approaching, you know, the business, the design aspect of it as well, and making sure that you kind of connect the dots. I think it's been fantastic, actually. This is my first experience of an evening like this, and thoroughly well worth my travel up from Devon. I've come all the way up from Devon for this evening. A brilliant session with the panel, learnt a lot, and yep, I'll be here again. I think um, as I'm new to the whole entrepreneur scene, uh, it's very useful for me to see what uh, what the leading entrepreneurs in the area actually think and what they expect uh, is going to be happening in the coming years. Well, I think it's really good to get everybody together who's got the same kind of dream. You should be aware of all of the terms that that different people use to describe the same thing. That's very useful, I thought. <laughs> I thought it was very um, informative and gave me some good ideas for me to take forward for the future. I think the biggest benefit is obviously networking, finding the like-minded people we can work together with. I really like it. It's really good. I'm glad that I'm here. I'm looking forward to the next one.